Welcome to Faith Life Ministries International, the home of miracles. Total gospel to total man. I'll be without you, Lord, you know I need you more and more. Lord, you are my everything. Lord, you everything to me. More, more, more of you, Lord. More, more, more of you, Lord. More, more, more of you, Lord. More of you, I need. I need it. And oh, I need it Every hour Lord, I need you Oh, bless me now, my My Savior Lord, I come To thee Father, we are gathered before you today by the election of your grace. We thank you, Lord, for your hand over our lives and our family. Thank you, Lord, for preserving us, keeping us, protecting us. We return all glory and honor and adoration to you in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. The Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and there they find safety. Father, I decree that everyone under the influence of my voice and under the influence of this telecast come under the divine covering of your presence. No harm shall befall any of my listeners in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. I decree the covenant of exemption on every household where my voice is being received now that there will not be any loss in the name of jesus not the loss of property not the loss of life not the loss of health in the name of jesus i decree an embargo against every satanic flood that no evil shall befall anyone under the influence of my voice in the name of jesus Father, we need you more than ever before. We ask for your abiding, manifesting presence upon us, upon the works of our hands, upon our families, in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. I've been getting a lot of questions from people. Why me? Why me? Why me? Why me? Why is God allowing what is happening to me to happen to me? And one time the Holy Ghost gave me a word of wisdom and I replied one of the people asking me, why me? Why is me all the time going through the things I'm going through in my family? Any footballer with a ball in the field of play commands the attention of everyone in the stadium. The attention of the fans, the attention of the opposite team, the attention of his teammates. Some are hailing in his support, some are booing him. His teammates are there to support him, to help him play well. The opposing team is there to stop him, particularly if he's a striker, to stop him from scoring. Brethren, every time you are with the ball, you command attention. Attention from supporters and attention from oppositions. The reason why the world is talking about you, the reason why the world around you, your community, your family, your colleagues, the reason why the oppositions are coming against you, the attacks, is because you are with the ball. When you are with the ball in your family, there will be family crisis and trouble around your person because the plan of the enemy is to stop you, to make sure you do not have the ball. 
God said this to me. If you don't want to be attacked, leave the ball. If you don't want people to talk about you, you don't want to be attacked, leave the ball. Like I said, especially if you're a striker and you are making effort to score, there are people who are specifically trained as defenders to stop you from scoring. The same way in the journey of life. There are agents of the devil that are anointed and designed by Satan to stop you from scoring the goals of your destiny. Their assignment is to hinder you from reaching where God wants you to be. But I decree in the name of Jesus, every effort of the wicked to stop you from reaching your destination shall not prosper. Every enterprise of the gang up of satanic forces, human or spirits, to hinder you from fulfilling the ordinances of God concerning your life, shall not prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. So every time you wonder why, why the attacks? Why is it you are the one people are always talking bad of? It's because you have the ball. When you have the ball, people will come after you. Some will speak in your favor, some will speak against you. You only become a news when you are a topic. If you are not a topic, you never become a news. It's because you are top there. That is why people are talking about you. I encourage you today to stand firm upon the word of God. The challenges against you are because of your position. Greatness is in the inside of you. But as you hold on and continue pushing on, the mercy of God will bring you to your destination. The forces from your father's house, the forces from your mother's house that are contending against your destiny, is as a result of the ball that is with you. You are the player and by the mercy of God, you will play into your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. As I have been praying all through the lockdown season, brethren, God has been giving me weapons by which we can overcome the adversary of the time that we are in. And by the grace of God, I have been sharing with us as the Lord is been speaking to me. I want to continue from where I stopped on Thursday evening. One of the weapons God has given to us to stop the advancement of the adversary is our mouth, our tongue. It's important we know that our mouth is not just being given to us by God to eat. Much more than eating. Our mouth is given to us by God for prophecy and for declaration. Your destiny is in your mouth. You close your mouth, you close your life. And that's the reason why the enemy does not want us to talk. And when we talk, he makes us say things that we shouldn't say. Because the devil knows that everything that you say, you see. What you declare is what you clear. I pray that today that God's mercy will locate you. And God will give you strength unction that will bring about divine fulfillment in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Our mouth is given to us by God as a weapon to stop the adversaries of our lives. Sickness is an adversary. Poverty is an adversary. An adversary is a force or an agent that is designed to stop us from advancement. Anything that stands against your advancement is an adversary. You will agree with me that sickness is an adversary because sickness is dangerous. Most times when we are afflicted with sickness, the ultimate purpose is for death. The thief commit no but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So if we understand the power God is giving to us in the tongue, no evil by the enemy designed as an adversary will be able to stop us from reaching our goal in the name of Jesus. By the grace of God, I am looking beyond coronavirus. I'm looking beyond the lockdown season. I'm seeing the end of the year. And everyone under the influence of my voice, I decree in the name of Jesus, 2020 will not see your end. You will see the end of 2020. I want you to begin to see beyond the lockdown season. I want you to begin to see beyond the coronavirus season. For all this has passed already. Forget about what you are seeing. By the spirit of the living God, by the word of God, we prophesy the end of this virus. We prophesy the end of this plague and we decree a new beginning. 
begin to speak in that light and in that manner and you will enjoy the abundance of the Lord I am trusting God by the end of the year we shall be celebrating with you and every member of your household that none is missing in the name of Jesus Christ the Son of God Luke chapter 21 verse 14 to 15 I like us to see what the word of the Lord say verse 14 say settle it therefore in your heart establish it not to meditate before what ye shall answer verse 15 for I will give you a mouth and wisdom this is God speaking I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all not some of which all your adversaries including poverty including sickness including stagnation disappointment frustration these are all your adversaries which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or resist the problem is we have not been using our mouth as effective as we should god say i will give you a mouth and wisdom the wisdom is in the mouth every time you open your mouth and declare the counsel of the lord every adversary which the enemy has organized to stand against your advancement they will not be able to resist in the name of jesus imagine yourself speaking the word of god against that infirmity speaking against the symptoms that you feel speaking against the limitation that you sense or you see imagine your mouth speaking against it vehemently by the wisdom of god imagine how god will give you victory in the name of jesus christ adversaries there are so many of them the good news is the bible say which all your adversaries so every adversary satan and his agent are subjected to the authority of the word of god that is in your mouth so you must use your mouth if you truly desire to enjoy triumph over the wickedness of the devil in the time and the age that we are in praise the name of jesus christ look at the book of mark chapter 11 mark chapter 11 verse 23 to 24 for verily i say unto you that whosoever this privilege is not just for those who are ministers of god every born again child of god is entitled to this privilege is the heritage is the heritage of the sense of the lord for verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain brethren i perceive in my spirit that so many of us under my under the influence of my voice this morning has mountains before us that we desire not to see anymore a mountain is an obstacle a mountain is a barrier a mountain is that which the enemy has positioned before you to stop you from advancing to your destination he said for verily i send to you that whosoever shall say to this mountain you must open your mouth and say be thou removed i like you to begin to generate grace in your spirit to begin to speak against every mountain that is before you that mountain of sickness that mountain of poverty that mountain of limitation disappointment frustration i'd like you to open your mouth and speak against it today be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart i don't care what symptoms you see I do not care what symptoms the enemy has been showing to you and the wicked voice of the enemy has been telling you that you are sick if you doubt not in your heart but shall believe that those things which he said which he said shall come to pass which he said so you have to continuously say it it's not enough to say it today wake up in the morning keep saying it the next day keep saying it keep saying it until you see that the things which you are saying is replacing the things which you are saying keep saying it until you see that the things which you are saying is replacing the things which you are saying because anything that you can see is temporary you can change it by the power in your mouth because it's a privileged weapon given to us by God to stop the adversaries that are positioned by the wicked to stop us. But shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. He shall have whatsoever he said. 
Why are you therefore surprised about the event of your life when your mouth is what has been determining the things that you are seeing around you? It shouldn't surprise you. If you don't like what you are seeing, then change what you are seeing. Very simple. If you don't like what you are seeing, then change what you are saying and begin to say it from today. This is one principle in the kingdom and in the world that can be never ever overemphasized. We can never overemphasize the power of right speaking. Our mouth is a weapon given to us by God to stop the adversary. Verse 24. Mark 11, verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what thing soever ye desire, when you pray, what thing soever you desire, when you pray, believe that ye shall receive them and ye shall have them. Brethren, you will agree with me that from this scripture, our life is at the mercy of our mouth. There is no two ways about it. You will agree with me by this scripture that our life moves in the direction of our mouth. So what you are seeing is as a result of what you are saying. Your life cannot be any better than what your mouth is saying and your mouth is declaring. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, begin to speak health and never get tired of speaking it. Sometimes the more you speak health, the more you feel weak. That is the plan of the wicked. That is why the Bible says, let the weak say that I am strong. He said, let them that are redeemed. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So the more you feel it, the more you should speak it. Because God is no feeling. God is a spirit. And the Bible says that the just shall live by faith and not by feeling. So the more you feel it, the more you should declare the word of God. The more you feel it, the more you should declare the word of God. And I tell you, friends, it's a matter of time that the wicked will give way for the power of light. I ask myself, what does God do? All God does is to talk. All God does is to talk. And God say, God wants to fight, he speaks. God wants to create, he speaks. God wants to change a thing, he talks. God does not move, all he does is to talk. God wants to move, he speaks. And God say, and God saw. And God say, and God saw. Whatever God wants to bring into being, he just says it. And the Bible says we are designed, we are created after the image and the likeness of God. So if we want to live like God and we want to triumph like God, we must exercise the authority that God is giving us by privilege of grace of talking. That is one major reason why God gave us a mouth as a weapon to speak against the works of Satan. Even when you go to God in prayer, what do you do? You talk. If you don't know how to talk, brethren, you are in trouble. The wickedness of the wicked will overflow you. Satanic spells and demonic agendas will overflow you. Because we live in a very wicked world. Our world is very wicked. There are all kinds of satanic manipulations going on. The one whom you are laughing with today, you do not know what he carries or she carries in her heart against you. We eat, we drink, we do not know what we are eating and drinking most times when it is not at home. Sometimes even at home. But God has given us a mount which we can stop and to resist all adversaries of the wicked against us. You will not be a victim. Your children will not be victims. In the name of Jesus, as they gather against you, they shall scatter. As they gather against your children, they shall scatter. By the mercy of God, all that God has ordained for you to enjoy in 2020, you shall enjoy. In the name of Jesus Christ, even in the lockdown season, money will look for you. Favor will look for you in Jesus' mighty name. If you go to God without words, you receive nothing from God. It's important you know how to talk, even in the presence of God. It's important you do not always speak against the works of Satan. It's important you know how to talk when you go to God. Those who don't know how to talk in the presence of God end up receiving nothing from God. Look at the book of Uzziah. Uzziah 14 and verse 2. Take with you words. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Take with you words. While you prepare for prayer time, there is one important thing you should prepare for. Prepare for words to go with. I take prayers very serious. I believe that my major calling is the place of an intercessor. 
and before I go to God for prayers, I write down the things I'm going to God with for prayers. It's important we know, as much as we come before God and we spend time in speaking in tongues, you must have words before God. Take with you words and turn to the Lord and say unto him, take away all iniquity. When you go to God, be specific. Don't beat around the bush. This is the reason why many of us go before the Lord and come out of the presence of God and no answer to our prayers. Prepare yourself just the way you prepare to go to work, the way you prepare to go to school, the way you prepare to go for shopping. That is the same way you prepare to enter the presence of God. Take words with you. This is what and what I intend to say before my father. Outside worshiping and praising God or praying in the spirit which the Holy Ghost will lead you, as much as you do that in the spirit, have words that you present before God. So I'm always writing of things I intend or desire to present to God. So when I go before God, after worshiping the Lord and speaking in the spirit for a while, and I'm interceding for people that I'm always praying for, and everyone under my covering by the grace of God, I take words to God. You must learn to speak to God. Take with you words and turn to the Lord, say unto him, when last did you say to God, enough of this thing, enough of that thing. I stand upon your word, my father, and I decree, so let it be. And receive us graciously, so we will render the calves of our lips. When was the last time your mouth has been declaring the counsel of the Lord? See what God expects of us in Psalm 107 and verse 2. Psalm 107 and verse 2. Psalm 107 verse 2. The Bible says, Let the redeem of the Lord, everyone born again, save and wash by the blood of Jesus. If you are born again, you are saved, you are redeemed of the Lord. This is one of the secrets God is putting in your hand to enjoy victory on earth and over the wickedness of the wicked in the world that we live in. Let the redeem of the Lord say so, whom he had redeemed from the hand of the wicked. It's important. You need to say it. It's not enough knowing it. It's not enough reading it. It's not enough meditating on it. It's important to go beyond reading and knowing and saying whom the Lord, whom the Lord has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. The Lord has redeemed you from sickness. Then begin to declare your health and your healing. Decree it. Say it out. The Lord has freed you from the enemy of poverty, from the enemy of frustration, from the enemy of delay, from the enemy of barrenness. Then begin to say it. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. This is talking to children of God. Open your mouth and begin to declare the counsel of the Lord. Begin to speak the counsel of God. For many years, the church has been saying that you possess what you declare. For many years, the church has been preaching that you only receive the things which your mouth prophesy and declare over your life. Now, the word of science has confirmed that words spoken do not die until they are cancelled. That's what the science world now found out. We know many, many years ago from the word of God that everything you say remain potent until you cancel it. Child of God is therefore very, very, very dangerous. It's gross spiritual irresponsibility for you to open your mouth carelessly and alter negative words. Negative words against yourself, negative words against God's children, negative words against God's servants, negative words against your, your health, negative words against your destiny. Because what you are doing, you are empowering the wicked and his agent to trap your destiny and to diminish your life. Now that the science world has recognized that words spoken do not die until they are cancelled. Every time you make declaration, it remains potent until you negate it. I stand upon the word of God. Every careless statement you have ever made over your destiny that the wicked has hijacked and is using to destroy your life and to tarnish your person or your destiny or your family, I cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus, I cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm chapter 8 and verse 2. Psalms chapter 8 and verse 2. Praise the name of Jesus. Your tongue will determine how well you live. 
out of the mouth of babes and suckling has thou ordained strength so there is strength in your mouth there is power in your mouth out of the mouth of babes and sucklings have thou ordained strength because of thy enemy brethren brethren this is one major weapon god has given us to exercise authority over our enemy whether physical or spiritual this is one way of visible or invisible the power of our mouth this is one subject that god has trained me with that has caused me to live the life i live by faith in christ jesus discipline your tongue and watch the enemy not come near your dwelling place in the name of jesus christ out of the mouth of babes and suckling has thou ordained strength because of thy enemy thou might steal the enemy and the avenger so with your mouth the strength god has ordained in your mouth you can steal the enemy you can steal the avenger i don't know what flood of the wicked right now is moving around your life moving around your family i don't know what flood it is you can define that flood maybe poverty sickness infirmity the bible says, with your mouth you can steal it stop in the name of jesus I therefore stand in support with every believer watching me by the privilege of grace. We lift our hands in prayers right now and say enough of the plague of coronavirus. We command it to be still in our world in the name of Jesus Christ. We cast it out of our nations in the name of Jesus. We decree supernatural cure by the hand of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ and we decree for wisdom upon the science world for the sins that will work in the name of jesus christ it's in the mouth it's in the mouth keep saying it keep declaring it and the message of god will come through for you in jesus mighty name numbers chapter 14 numbers 14 verse 26 to 28 numbers 14 verse 26 to 28 praise the name of jesus numbers 14 26 and the lord spake unto moses and unto aaron and saying remember the word of god is forever said to what god said yesterday he said it today he said it tomorrow jesus is the same today he's the same today he's the same tomorrow what he said to one yesterday he said it today again to us and the lord spake to Aaron and to Moses verse 27 he said how long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmured against me brethren to murmur against God is classified as evil to open your mouth and speak against the word of God is classified as evil God does not only hear prayers God also hear murmuring and every time you murmur you bring destruction upon yourself I am tired I am fed up that is a lie of the wicked the more you keep saying you are tired you are fed up then your life is tired everything about you will come to a standstill that is what the devil wants you to say i can't go through this anymore how long i will i be going through this thing that is a lie of the devil that was what they did in the wilderness which murmured against me i have heard the murmuring of the children of israel i hope you know that every time you murmur god is hearing you and not only God hearing you, the devil is also hearing you. And for every negative thing you say against God, you are closing yourself in a position where the wicked have access to torment you. It will not be your portion. Which they murmured against me. Then look at verse 28. Very, very, very critical scripture. Look at verse 28. Verse 28. Say unto them, God spoke to Aaron and to Moses, I am privileged as a priest of God to speak to everyone under the influence of this telecast. God said, I should say to you, say unto them, as truly as I live. It's dangerous when you hear God say things like this. And you know God does not change. So what he said to them yesterday, he it to us today. As long and as truly as I live, say in the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. So will I do unto you. So whatever you are saying to the ears of God, that is what you will be receiving from God. The question is, what have you been saying? I can dwell on this subject for the next two months 
because if you get this right every other thing around your life will come right thank god for this revelation for that revelation as much as we know we are in the end time and we are expecting the coming of jesus the time we have left before the coming of jesus is designed to be the best time ever for the church of jesus on earth but how can we enjoy the best of god on earth if we are not speaking the word of god say unto them this is a command from the lord it's dangerous do not expect God to deliver into your hand what you have not said into his ears. Do not expect God to deliver into your hands what you have not said into his ears. It is what you say to the ears of God that the hand of God will release into your own hands. Brethren, I'd like you to begin to speak faith in the name of Jesus. I have a brighter future. I see great days ahead of me. Irrespective of what I am going through today, I prophesy in the name of Jesus. It is well with my soul. It's well with my children. It's well with the works of my hand. It's well with my business. I am the head. I am not the tail. Agree with God and not with Satan. When you murmur, you are agreeing with the devil. When you praise God and you declare the words of faith, you are agreeing with God. Who are you agreeing with? Very soon all this will come past. If you believe it, you will declare it. And if you declare it, God will make it happen for you in the name of Jesus Christ. We have a huge responsibility, child of God. It is our responsibility. God is not going to declare for us. We need to declare for ourselves to the, to the mercy of God and against the works of Satan. Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah 54 and verse... 14 to 17 Isaiah 54 from verse 14 please look at this very closely in righteousness thou shall be established thou shall be far from oppression sickness is an oppression of Satan from this day I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus be far from oppression your family be far from oppression in the name of Jesus Christ for thou shall not fear from the terror for it shall not come near thee. Somebody shout a loud amen to that. The terror of the wicked will not come near you. You shall be far from it. You will hear of it, but it will not come near your dwelling place in Jesus' name. Verse 15 says, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee, put your name there, shall fall for thy sake. Every gathering against you, against your children, against your finances, against your family, scatter and fall for your sake in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 16. We're going to verse 17. Verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coal in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. I have created the waster to destroy. And look at what verse 17 says. No weapon that is formed against thee formed against your children formed against your finances formed against your business no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment who shall condemn you the responsibility is in your hand not in the hand of god why is god allowing all these things to happen to me no jesus has paid the price the Bible says when he was nailed to the cross, he said, it is finished. The Hebrew word translated to it is finished said, fully paid for. He has fully paid. There is nothing more to pay for. Jesus has done his job, sealed and done. Child of God, if you don't begin to open your mouth to speak against the harassment of the wicked, you will suffer satanic intimidation. And there is nothing God will do about it. He has given us the authority. It's in our hand. It's now for you to use your mouth to speak against it. He said, every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou, not God, thou shall condemn. So if you are waiting on God, God has been waiting on you because God has done his part. He's finished. He doesn't rebuke the devil anymore. It's our responsibility now to rebuke the devil. He said, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So to stand against the works of Satan and resist every judgment from the pit of hell, the Bible classify it as righteousness. So any man or woman that is visiting any altar or shrine against you and your children, I condemn them in the name of Jesus Christ. 
whosoever has traveled far to undo you or your family they will not return in the name of jesus any object the wicked has planted that you have stepped upon i cause it to die out of your body in the name of jesus christ the son of god begin to open your mouth and declare by the authority in the name of jesus christ and see how god will manifest his power on your behalf and do great things for you why is our word so powerful what makes the things we say so potent that when we say them they come to pass as we say them i will give you three to four keys as time permit me and i'd like you to take them very serious key number one god is committed to bring to pass your words god is committed every time you open your mouth you speak and you speak right heaven is committed to make it happen it's isaiah 44 verse 24 to 26 Isaiah 44 verse 24 to 26 He said Thou sayest the Lord Thy Redeemer He that formed thee from the womb I am the Lord that maketh all things That stretch forth the heavens alone That spreadeth abroad the earth by myself Verse 25 That frustrated Hallelujah Glory be to Jesus that frustrated the tokens of the liars everything the enemy have said they say you can't make it they say you will never live to see the end of the year they say that which you are pursuing you will never live to see it materialize they say that which you are planning to to see happen it will never happen in your favor it's a lie from the devil i don't care whatever they say and whoever is saying it some of them have even gone further to go to visit demonic and satanic priests just to make sure that the things they have said concerning you come to pass it will not prosper god will frustrate them in the name of jesus that frustrated the tokens of the liar they say you will end this year in pain they say you will not end this year in joy i decree in the name of jesus whatever they have said it will boomerang it will backfire in the name of jesus christ that frustrated the tokens of the liars and make a diviners mad that turn it wise men backward and make it their knowledge foolish look at verse 26 that confirmed the words of his servant it's not just ministers of god every born again child of god is a servant of god that is why the things we say is very powerful that is why the mouth is a very powerful weapon because god is committed to honor the words of our mouth that confirmed the word of his mouth so be very careful because whatever you are saying is what god will deliver to you or the enemy will be empowered with to torment or to harass you that confirmed the words of his servant and performed the counsel of his messengers that is the privilege god is giving to some of us as messengers of heaven a messenger is one that has a message and my message to the body of christ is to rescue god's children from the harassment and intimidation of the wicked and so i stand today as a messenger of god by the counsel of god in my mouth against every harassment of the wicked against you and your family seize in the name of jesus and receive god's touch in jesus mighty name that saith to jerusalem thou shalt be inhabited and to the city of judah ye shall be built i will raise up the decay places thereof whatever the wicked have scattered in your life whatever looks like it is dead can never be again i decree in the name of jesus let life come to it in jesus mighty name so number one reason the words of our mouth are so powerful before god and even before the wicked is because god confirms his word and the wicked can steal the words if you say them negatively to oppress your life so we are grateful to god that god confirmed the words of his ministers number two reason why the words of our mouth is so powerful the angels of god attend to the things that we say the angels of god every born again child of god has angels positioned by god as bodyguard 
the book of Psalm 23 says surely goodness and mercy shall follow me those are the names of angels angel mercy angel goodness these are your messengers they are assigned by God the Bible says angels are given to the heads of salvation to minister to in other words angels are assigned by God to us as servants so we have angels and these angels they walk with the things that we say so number one God confirms our words number two there are angels that carry out the instructions that we give to them so imagine the kind of instructions you've been giving to your angels every time you say I am tired I feel like dying you are giving your angels very negative instructions Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 6 your mouth is very important how far God or Satan goes in your life is determined by what you are saying suffer not your mouth to cause you to sin the word suffer there is do not allow do not allow your mouth to cause thy flesh to sin do you know this is one of the area a lot of believers are committing sin and I tell you child of God so many Christians will not go to heaven I am not an adulterer I do not steal I have never murdered anybody before but your mouth is been causing your flesh to sin every time you speak ill of God's people or you speak ill of people you are sinning against God you've been gossiping you've been saying terrible things against people you are sinning against God suffer not your mouth to cause your flesh to sin how many children of God have allowed their mouth to cause their flesh to sin and may God have mercy if we don't get it right and repent if the rapture comes you are not going to make it because sin is sin before God there is no big there is no small sin it's important that if you want to live right before God you must learn to tell me your mouth as men of God as ministers of God and as workers and as children of God you must learn to turn your mouth every time you open your mouth to speak it should be seasoned with grace not every time you open your mouth to speak you are saying something about somebody and everything you are saying is always negative you are the reason why the wicked is sitting against you because your mouth is causing your flesh to sin he said neither said thou before the angel that it was an error as soon as you say it the angels run with it it's too late once it's gone out of your mouth it's gone out of your mouth only mercy can rescue you and praise god the bible says we are not consumed by the mercies of god only mercy can rescue you i'm dying the angels run with it i'm stupid the angels run with it nothing is working the angels run with it so if you don't want the angels to run with it learn to say the right thing so that the angels will be running with the right thing it doesn't matter how long you'll be saying it. keep saying it until you start saying it that it was an error wherefore should god be angry at thy voice imagine how many believers god is angry at their voice because every time we open our mouth to speak our voice is being heard it's something wrong we are saying and destroy the works of our hands do you know how many mouth has caused the destroyer to destroy the works of our hands because our mouths are saying the wrong thing so number one god confirm the words of your mouth number two there are angels positioned by god and run with the things that you say and number three every word from our mouth is a seed that is being planted every word from our mouth is a seed every act of man is a seed words thoughts deeds are all seeds whatever a man doeth he shall reap every act of man is a seed and every seed you sow you shall germinate so whatever you are saying today that is not right i hope you are ready because harvest is coming for you genesis chapter 8 and verse 22 genesis 8 and verse 22 every act of man is a seed genesis 8 22 see what the word of god say while the earth remained seed time and harvest cold and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease brethren be careful the things that you are sowing with your mouth lift up your hands everyone wherever you are i decree in the name of jesus every force of the wicked contending with you from the pit of hell be arrested in the name of jesus christ i cause every hand of satan stretch out against you and your children wither in the name of jesus the son of god 
anyone under the influence of my voice that has been afflicted with coronavirus lay your hands on yourself i decree healing in the name of jesus christ from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet be healed in jesus name i cause every symptom out of your body in the name of jesus anyone going through any financial dryness i decree financial breakthrough in the name of jesus let doors be open in jesus mighty name lord i have declared your word i decree that this word go forth and turn things around in the houses in the businesses of everyone under the influence of my voice in the name of jesus the son of the living god any form of satanic spell and limitation against them or their family i cancel it in the mighty name of jesus christ the son of god and lord i pray for anyone who has not given his or her life to jesus this is an opportunity if you are not saved you are not saved you can enjoy god's redemptive power and package and blessing if you have not received christ into your life I'd like you to say this after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life as my Lord and Savior. I surrender my heart to you. If you've done that prayer, I declare you say through and by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. And for everyone that have their communion item, pick it, your blood, your juice. I decree that juice as the blood of Jesus, the bread as the body of Christ. As you eat and you drink, may the blood of Jesus and the body of Christ minister to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will keep winning, you will keep winning, you will keep winning in the name of Jesus. Keep speaking the word of God, keep declaring God's word, keep sowing your seed, keep carrying out your covenant practices, and keep enjoying God's mercy and God's blessing. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Welcome to Faith Life Ministries International, the home of miracles. Total gospel to total man.